20. Remove camera filters. 15. 10. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Glasses off. In this episode, we chase one of nature's most mystical events. Join us for the Great American Eclipse. On this adventure, I was looking for redemption from the experience of the 2017 solar eclipse. I had terrible gear then, and missed out on viewing the event because I was too focused on getting the shot. I was determined that that was not going to happen this time. My mission this time was twofold. First, to capture a high definition image of totality in all of its glory. And second, to take enough time to witness the event with my own eyes. If I was able to do more, so much the better. These two goals were so important to me that I was determined to drive to any point on the line of totality. I had places picked out on a line that stretched out over 2,000 miles from Banderas, Texas to Holton, Maine and beyond if necessary. I didn't want to get caught on eclipse day with my pants down. So I took every opportunity I could to prepare and practice for this. I watched countless videos on past events, but in the end, I had to make the decisions on how to shoot this one. I offered workshop classes on the weekends leading up to the event for others to join. We talked about settings, worked out bugs, and for me at least, really got to know our gear. I hope those that attended got something out of it in the end. For weeks, and even up until the night before April 8th, 2024, the weather forecasters had no idea what the weather was going to do on Eclipse Day. At the T-minus four day mark, they all seemed to think that most of the line of totality was going to be clouded out. With the uncertainty, I had my gear ready to go at a moment's notice. At T-minus two days, all the forecasts seemed to think that Maine would be the only sure place to view the eclipse. I was ready to make that 25 plus hour drive. The stress over where to go was really taking its toll. As I drove home from the final solar workshop, I found myself asking for a sign about where to go. Five minutes later I got it, though I didn't know what it meant yet. In my experience, and I might have said this before in another video, seeing a bald eagle before a photo event is a good omen. On my way home that afternoon, I saw a bald eagle flying over the road near my home. I still didn't know where I was going, but I took that to mean that wherever I chose to go, it would work out. In the months leading up to the eclipse, I had been working with my astronomy group looking for a Missouri viewing location. The city of Jackson had reached out to the president of our group about having a public outreach event in front of the courthouse. I'm all about astronomy outreach. It's the reason for this channel. But I was not about the public that day. And I was not alone in that line of thinking either. Jackson then let us know that they would have one of the city parks available for private photography. I volunteered to drive down after work and scope out the park. And it looked like it would work out just fine. Now I'll leave this here before moving on. You see it yet? I didn't even notice until I was putting this video together. T minus one day arrived, and I knew it was going to be a 24 plus hour day. I decided, late the night before, that I would end up just going to Jackson with the rest of my group. After doing some final checks and supply shopping, 
I joined my friend chasing the milk for a very early morning drive to Jackson. We arrived around 2.30 a.m. and started setting up the gear that needed to be polar aligned in the dark. After I had my base camp set up, I tried to get some sleep, but the anticipation and the annoyingly bright security lights at the park made that impossible. At dawn, we made our final preparations and settled in for what would be a long morning watching the high clouds roll through. That private viewing park turned into a madhouse of people. Turns out, it wasn't supposed to be private at all. The city had food trucks and live music all day. There were between five and 600 people there in totality. I took my daughter with me as well, so she could see what I do on my crazy photo trips, but also so she could witness this event as well. Let's just say she had a learning experience. When the eclipse started, I put her in charge of the video camera and we went to work. I've had a lot of people call me crazy for wanting to do all this. The eclipse was visible in all of the lower 48 states, with some percentage of totality. Over my house, it was going to be 97.92%. They, including my wife, said that was good enough. In a total solar eclipse, the difference between 99 and 100% totality is night and day. Don't get me wrong here. Viewing an eclipse at any percentage can be a life-altering experience for people. My trip to Texas in October of 2023 for the annular eclipse showed me just that. While we are a highly scientific civilization today and think we have the cosmos mostly figured out, witnessing an eclipse brings out an ancient, primal fear in a lot of people. And it can also be a reality-shifting event. Not to go all woo on you. With an hour to go till totality, I broke out my little Weber Q grill and started cooking up some grub. At first contact, a great gust of wind came up and nearly blew away my awning. That could have been disastrous for the folks downwind. Luckily we caught it and secured it. As the countdown on the solar eclipse timer app on my phone melted away towards second contact and totality, the tension in the air among the photographers grew palpable. Suddenly, an old work friend of mine appeared out of nowhere. That was a very pleasant surprise. If I had gone to Maine, I would have missed him. We had quite a few people start to show up and start asking questions in the final minutes before totality. So if you're watching this and tried to talk to me during that time, I do apologize for being short, but it was go time for us. In the final moments before totality, the light took on what can only be described as an unnatural silver color, and then the temperature plummeted. I would not be surprised if it dropped 20 degrees. It was a hot day, and then it was not. My GoPro captured the moon as it approached. As it got dark, the shadow bands became visible. I had not seen these in 2017, but they were amazing. They made the ground appear to be pulsing. Unfortunately, I was not able to capture them on film.
When totality was reached, even I could not hold back my excitement. 30 seconds, hands on camera filters. Filters. There's Jupiter. Filters off? Not yet. Oh my god. Dude, I, I can see Jupiter. 20. Remove camera filters. Oh my god. 15. Oh my god. 10. Oh my god. 10. Oh my god. 5. Oh my god. 4. 3. 2. Oh my god. 1. Glasses off. Glasses off. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. And then the fire nation failed. Observe for planets and stars. Was like, do we have a total of 2017? I don't remember this. Oh my god. Oh, this Oh my god, look at that. It's a uh, black thing with a halo. <laughs> look at, look at, you see the prominence. Yeah. That's a huge prominence. You can see it with the naked eye. Look at, the, look at six o'clock. Within a minute of totality, a huge prominence was visible coming off the sun. I first noticed it with my own eyes, and then confirmed it on my camera's view screen. I was completely blown away. I scrambled to cycle through the different settings needed to compile a shot of totality, and then zoomed in on the sun for a better shot of the prominence, and worked my way back to the original settings in preparation for the third and fourth contacts. I stood in awe at what I was seeing. As I said earlier, the difference between 99 and 100% totality is literally night and day. After totality, the crowds began to quickly disperse, leaving only the photographers in for the long haul. We won't talk about the absolute nightmare that was the return trip home. The next eclipse in the U.S. isn't until August 23, 2044, with totality visible in North Dakota and Montana into Canada. Then again on August 12, 2045, from California to Florida. If you have the means, the next total eclipse will be on August 12, 2026, visible in Iceland and Spain. I've got a couple things planned for 2024. So until then, I'll leave you with a 2017 Great American Eclipse, the 2023 Annular Eclipse, and the 2024 Great American Eclipse. Until next time, keep chasing and clear skies.